All right, good morning, Prayer Warriors. This is Prayer Warriors 365 Armor Up AM program. My name is Regina M. Dick, and Renee is not hosting today, but she's going to be online for just a little while, and we want to connect with her before she goes into some tests and pray for her uh, on this Wednesday morning, February 26, 2014. Uh, let's begin by armoring up with God's Word in Acts 1. 4 through 8, it says, and this is Jesus speaking to his apostles, it says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but she, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his authority, but you shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit. It has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria and to the end of the earth so this is the promise of the Holy Spirit that the Lord left with us and to this day from then to this day the Holy Spirit's moving has been moving in the lives of many and as you will notice it is a baptism of the Holy Spirit it is uh, Christ with us, in us, to lead us, to guide us, to empower us with the gifts, to spread his good news, to witness to others who he is and who he is now in our lives. So this is something that is the movement that is going on and has been going on. And especially in these days, it is just phenomenal some of the things that are going on. Several years ago, when I started putting things out on the Internet, putting videos and, and movement of the Holy Spirit, it just absolutely amazed me how much so in these days. Because we need that connection personally and individually through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when Christ died, that opened those doors, that personal relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. Before then, there wasn't that personal relationship. That opportunity wasn't there. It took the Lord leaving and the Father promising the Holy Spirit. And amazing things are coming out of that. Things that we on our own can't understand, but it simply requires receiving and trusting and moving and it is a world that is not of this world, but an upside-down kingdom. It is something that we can't understand based on our limited understanding, but we learn to trust through that personal relationship. The Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirit. The Holy Spirit moves through us as we witness to others, as we grow and learn from the Holy Spirit, that light within us shines. He transforms us from the old man to the new man. And indeed, we are lights to, in this world, walking in the Holy Spirit. That's why when they say walking in the Spirit, that's what they mean. Walking in the Holy Spirit. Being led, driven, moved, by, and refined by the Holy Spirit. It is an absolutely incredible opportunity. And all we need do is to, first of all, trust, confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and rose again, and receive his Holy Spirit to surrender to trusting in being led by the Holy Spirit. Personally, what an incredible opportunity that is just unbelievable. I mean, there's no way of explaining it unless you actually have experienced in your life and moved in being led by the Holy Spirit, 
you can't really explain it to others. I remember when, after I had received the Holy Spirit when I was a lot younger and trying to explain it to a friend and praying over this friend to receive the Holy Spirit and her receiving it. I mean, she was just, it was like seeing myself and her and the experience that she had, that glow, that just complete revelation of more than what this world has to offer. So praise be to God, we have this opportunity in this day, and we need it more now than ever. So Father, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, as we move, Lord, in this world in these days, as things are being uncovered and we're being shaken out of complacency, we are being shaken to our core to make a decision, Father, that we get to that place of surrender or get to that place of brokenness that brings us to that sweet surrender and to your arms, your loving arms, Father, your Holy Spirit, as we are given that teachable spirit to listen to you, to hear from you, to see you firsthand in our lives personally, so that as we move through this world and this temporary time that we have, we are led and guided by you. Thank you, Father, for your indwelling Holy Spirit as we trust in you each and every step of the way as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the name above all names, the good news, that faith, Father, that you instill in us, that measure of faith that you give us. Thank you, Jesus, and your Holy Spirit. We pray and we thank you. Amen. All right, Prayer Warriors 365, our mission is to bring prayer warriors from around the world in unity, fighting the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ through the power of prayer in the Holy Spirit one day at a time. Thank God we have this one day, and God gives us enough grace for one day at a time. Armor Up AM, this program is born out of this growing need for Christians to come together in effective prayer in these unsettling and confusing times we are in. We're being shaken, and we're being shaken more and more. All the signals are there. All the signs are there. And we don't, um, like the verses said, we are not to know what's the seasons or the times. But that's in God's authority. We are to trust the Lord. We are to receive his Holy Spirit and to trust him. Don't you know, question, don't keep asking, just trust them. Things are coming together. That's why we do it one day at a time. Because as we try to figure out the future, then we'll find ourselves in the middle of anxiety. And that's not what we're called to do. We're to be anxious for nothing. And to do that means that one-on-one, -on -one, stay in the present, in his presence, trusting him. And he reveals, he unfolds, and you'll see that if you press in with your relationship with the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. So Armor Up AM is our opportunity to come together to encourage you, to support you with prayer, to pray for others, to pray for our nations, to pray for our world. It is the offensive weapon in the entire armory is the power of prayer to stand and to keep standing in Jesus Christ. So praise be to God that we have this opportunity of technology to come together. So this is our opportunity each morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. We don't always go to 9 o'clock, but we will keep it open for prayer requests. Uh, and we ask you to step up to the plate and ask. It says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open to you. So that's what we do. We bear our hearts and our request, and that opens up the door for others to do the same. Prayer is much more than just asking God it, or just repeating words. It is actually an opportunity for dialogue, major communication. And prayer is a privilege, and it's all of our calling. It's the highest calling. We're all called to prayer because it's communication with God. It's dialogue. It opens that door of intimacy and relationship with Jesus Christ. And that, indeed, we are walking in the fullness and the completeness of salvation. Because, in other words, you're leaning on the Lord to guide you in every area of your life. Because 
what you'll begin to realize, what be, will be unfolded before you is an understanding that we are indeed connected, that indeed his church is coming together, that indeed he does have it under control, and we do play a part. Your life makes a difference. So what we like to do is in this program is to come together in prayer and discuss some of the things that are going on in our world and then also come together for personal prayer request. For today, uh, we have several articles. This is February 26th. Under the secular, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, an article that came out in USA Today. Benedict, uh, that's Pope, uh, ex-Pope Benedict, denies that he was pressured to resign. It's USA Today, February 26, 2014. Uh, and the reason I, wanted, I decided to uh, include this particular article, there were several other ones, but this in particular because there was something that came out in Frontline uh, today, yeah, last night on uh, PBS, and it talked about the secrets that are being uncovered, and that's part of God's plan. A lot of things are being uncovered, and we want to talk about this a little bit and, of course, pray. Uh, and the Christian, we have in CBN News from Chris Mitchell, February 26, 2014 article, Indivisible Film Tackles Crusade to Destroy Israel. Very interesting article and gives us an insight what's going on with our media also. Then under the Biblically Prophetic, it says, Rabbi on, of the Western Wall in Jerusalem refutes the PA, which is Palestinian Authority President. It says that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish people. And again, this is Jimmy DeYoung, Prophecy Today, February 25th. And before we go on any further, I know Renee may still be on the line. Let me just check. Yes, she is. And I just want to uh, check in with her and pray for her before she goes in for some tests in, at, um, in the hospital. Renee, are you there? I am. Good morning. Good morning, prayer warriors. We want to pray uh, for you before you go in. I know you're going to be going in any minute, so can we do that right now? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much. All right, dear Holy Father, God, we come before you right now in this moment in time, and um, we praise you, Father, for Renee and what you have created in her, that perfect peace that is upon her, that no matter what comes against her father, that she has learned to come to you and draw upon living water. Father, you have a calling upon her life that is unfolding before her. And Lord, we thank you that we can come for any and every area of our life that either we are um, in doubt or confused or might feel some anxiety for Father, you bring us back to that place of peace. Lord, as she goes in and gets these tests on her body, this temple, Father, for your Holy Spirit, that she finds healing in the fact in her, in her, her mental and uh, her emotional being, well-being, as her body, Father, is being looked at and that these doctors, whatever they find, Father, that she trusts in you. And, Lord, that your purpose and plan is unfolding before her. Father, I thank you that she is healed, no matter what transpires. That she is learning in her journey with you, Father, more of who you are with her and in her. That relationship grows only stronger. So no matter what comes against her, Father, she is at perfect peace. She is healed everywhere she hurts. I pray for these tests and whatever transpires. For, Lord, we know that you are our great physician. You are our healing everywhere we hurt. Praise be to God. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. Amen. All right, Renee, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Oh, yes, I will be there tomorrow, and I am just going to hang here until they come and get me and just listen in. Oh, they just okay. called my name. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. See you Perfect guys tomorrow. Timing. Praise be to God. God bless you all. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
All right, that was Renee. We just wanted to check in with her. She's not uh, on with us today, but she's getting ready to go into some tests. And that's the incredible part about this uh, venue, this forum that we have with prayer warriors. You can call in. You know, uh, that is perfect opportunity to, no matter where you are, you can call in and at this time and talk live. The uh, guest call-in number is 585-769-4755. Uh, call in. We'll check in with you to see with your, if you have a prayer request. You can call in just to listen. So you don't have to be online on the Internet. Um, you call in. We will check in with you. Just give us your name, where you're from, and your prayer requests, prayer concerns, questions, or praise reports. This is a form to connect in prayer, to get to that place of coming together and asking the Lord. It's powerful. And the very first thing we do is ask the Holy Spirit into this opportunity to come together when two or more are gathered. He is with us. The live chat room also is open during the programs, usually right after we begin the program. A lot of people will get on and give their prayer requests there. A lot of people like to still do things anonymously, sometimes uncomfortable with um, sharing live. And that's not a problem. We want you to share your prayer request. So you can put in, uh, information in the chat, chat room and uh, your prayer requests, concerns, questions, whatever you might have. We just ask that it not be abused. People will get on and sometimes get in there and kind of monopolize, uh, argue, quarrel. This is not a forum for arguing and quarreling. This is a forum for take, going before the Lord and asking together with our brothers and sisters for prayer, coming together to pray with them, to encourage them, and to support them. This is not for debate. So if you are, uh, if you do get in the chat room, leave it open for consideration for others to uh, pray and to ask. The third option that we have is our prayer box. You can go to our website, Thing in Multimedia, just go to gnbm.org, then forward slash prayer box. And in the prayer box, it's simply fill out a form. Uh, and again, you can leave it anonymously if you want to, and we will pray each morning, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. We will pray for prayer, new prayer requests, and we will continue to pray for you. Whether you're anonymous or not, whoever puts anything in that prayer box, we will continue to pray, no matter where you might be. We ask that you check out the prayer box, uh, the prayer request of others in the, in the room, and connect by saying, I prayed for you. There's a little button that will say, I prayed for you. Click on that. Pray for them. And what you will begin to see, too, is a pattern of request, very similar. So what that reveals is, indeed, there is a strategy that is coming against people. And it is a strategy by an enemy, our adversary, Satan, and his demons, the devils, or the accusers that keeps us in a stop, constant state of feeling condemnation when indeed we are set free by Jesus Christ. But we have an enemy and he wants to keep you in that place of feeling that you're condemned, that there's no hope. That's a lie. That's a deception. So connect on the prayer box. Um, go leave your prayer request. And then also we encourage you to find prayer groups join them. They are growing up all over the world today. There's plenty of prayer request uh, opportunities out on the internet. Just connect. We're com we are coming together all over the world. And this is our opportunity to gather with brothers and sisters and to pray, especially for the things that are going on. Many things are going on. All right. We uh, put together different uh, messages or lessons. The last one was day for our Prayer Warriors 365 series, Day 20, The Power of Praying in Tongues. That is available uh, on a prior episode that's archived in Blog Talk Radio. It's also available, uh, it's converted to video, and it's available on YouTube. And you can go, some of our audio broadcasts, 
not all of them, but most of them, uh, are being converted to video, and they are available on YouTube. Uh, our main channel is our Good News Broadcasting and Multimedia channel. Uh, that is, uh, you can find it just go by, by going to youtube.com forward slash G-N-V-M-O-R-G. Go there, check out the videos, uh, click on subscribe, make comments, share with others. This supports this mission. And then follow us here on Blog Talk Radio. Also, we do have another YouTube channel, which is our newer, newer one, and it's specifically for prayer warriors. And again, you go to youtube.com forward slash prayer warriors with an S, 365, and there's no spaces. Go to these channels, connect with others. This Internet is our opportunity to come together and to pray and to hear others and to uh, use this means of communication globally. And what we're discovering, which I have seen several times, because I've been doing this for a number of years, the pattern of what is going on, you begin to realize, wow, this is happening all over the world. And there is a purpose and plan. There is something that is going on. What we're getting, re getting ready to do next before we get into the current events is share with you our Armor of God Spiritual Warfare Prayer. It can be found at uh, gnbm.org. Just fill out the little form and we'll send one right directly to you. It's in PDF format. And what it is is... Bible verses from Ephesians and several other ones that are combined together with a prayer as we put on that spiritual armory. And what it does is as we do this and say it out loud first thing in the morning, uh, we encourage you to use this as an opportunity to speak it out loud. So as you are confronted with things in your life throughout the day, you are may be reminded to check in your spirit that, wow, I said that. And you begin to be aware of things that are going on rather than just blindly going through this day. You get prepared. Most importantly as preparation, first thing in the morning, is should be that alone time with God in prayer. That just talking to him, and again, prayer is dialogue. That means listening. And you may not hear things at at the beginning. You may not even be aware, but that's okay. You just keep doing it. Spend time with him. Give him the first part of your day. Spend time in the Bible. If you have devotionals, read those devotionals, and then come together in prayer with others. We're encouraging you, because even if you are a seasoned prayer warrior, we get attacked. We fall in sometimes to some deception usually in the world around us. So even though we may stumble, we don't fall or completely fall. I've fallen before, and the Lord indeed picks us back up, puts us back on track. And even though we know these things and we've learned these things, we get in the midst of the battle, and sometimes we get caught and we go down. But we are overcomers, and we overcome the world we're overcoming the flesh, and we're overcoming Satan, the devil. So praise be to God. First thing, put on that armor of God. We're going to play that on the other side. We'll discuss, start, begin to discuss our current events and go in prayer. So with that, here Armor is. of God, spiritual warfare prayer. Lord, today I fully receive the mighty power of your Holy Spirit within me. I put on the armor of God, standing strong against the devil's schemes, for I know my struggle is not with flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I choose to put on the full armor of God this day, so that when evil comes, I can stand my ground in faith in Jesus Christ for I am more than a conqueror. I stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around my waist, knowing that you, Father, are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. There is no other way to God except through you. 
I surrender my choices and my will to the guidance of your Holy Spirit, knowing full well that my choices have a ripple effect impact for your kingdom here on earth. I put on the breastplate of righteousness, for you are righteousness living within me through the Holy Spirit. I know that through you I am worthy of the kingdom of God, overcoming the deception of this world each day. Upon my head I place your helmet of salvation, taking every thought captive to your obedience, protecting and renewing my mind to see life and others through your perspective and no longer my own. I ask that I might be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I shod my feet with your gospel of peace as you open the doors, turning obstacles into opportunities ordering my steps as I fulfill your purpose and plan for my life, designed since before time began. During this day of grace, I hold up my shield of faith, quenching every flaming arrow, whenever and wherever they might come, knowing that with each victory, my faith in you grows only stronger in this good fight of faith. I lay ready, holding the double-edged sword of the Spirit, your Holy Scriptures and the revelation knowledge that you give me through your Holy Spirit, imparting to others your word during this day in the manner you see fit. Father, I pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Keep me alert and always praying for all of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I walk boldly and in victory in every area of my life knowing that your love sustains me as I surrender my own understanding and continually grow in trust and faith in you each and every day. Amen. Amen. That was Armor of God Spiritual Warfare Prayer. We've converted that to video, and it is in, on both YouTube channels. So if you want to watch it in a video format and take it and, um, you know, just take it to heart as you are putting on that spiritual armory because it is a spiritual battle. And what is happening in these days is a lot of the things that are going on in the spiritual realm are, realm are coming to uh, awareness in our realm. We're beginning to understand that the fight is not with flesh and blood. That as long as we're arguing with each other and debating and, and beating each other up, we're all losing. But we're getting beginning to see that what is really transpiring and how indeed to do battle so check it out uh, either YouTube channel uh, for the video version uh, also the uh, written version on again at gnbm.org just fill out the form or I think you can go to the powerful prayers there's a tab in there that you can find all right, with that, let's go on to our particular articles that we have today for current events. The very first one is out of USA Today, and it's actually from Associated Press article, and I think it is in conjunction with a uh, frontline documentary that came out last night on PBS that I happened to go come across, and it uh, was very um, eye-opening. It's things that I have um, personally uh, suspected and heard about, but this kind of brought even things even more into detail and also gave me the confirmation that indeed things are being uncovered. You've got to remember that we are in the days of revelation and in times is an uncovering, an unveiling. That means things are being brought to the surface, uh, ugly things not just in uh, world events or local events or, glo or nation nationwide events, but in our personal lives also. We're being shaken. The facades are coming down. And there's a reason. God has a plan. So with that, the very first article, USA Today, Benedict denies he was pressured to resign. Vatican City, this is out of Vatican City, uh, Associated Press, retired Pope Benedict uh, the 16th has denied speculation that he was pressured to leave office, saying his decision was freely made and uh, his alone. Benedict wrote to the Vatican's correspondent, uh, uh, La Stampa newspaper, 
amid a new round of speculation about his reasons ahead of Friday's first anniversary of the first resignation by a pope in 600 years. There isn't the slightest doubt about the validity of my resignation, he quoted, saying that the only condition for the validity is the full freedom of the decision. Speculation about his uh, invalidity is simply absurd. Benedict, 86, also defended his decision to continue wearing his white cassock of the papacy, saying that there are no other clothes available. Media are again speculating that what drove Benedict from office, from his office, Italian journalist uh, Sosi Saki uh, suggested last week that the conservative daily La Bureau that the resignation may have been invalid, claiming Benedict was pressured by a group of cardinals opposed to him. And, you know, the article continues and it says, you know, that he's not saying that's not the case, that he, that was his simple choice, that he made it out of concerns for his health. And, you know, that kind of falls in line with the front line. And I'm going to just go through the documentary just a little bit because what is being uncovered in the Vatican is a lot of major um, evil, basically, that's being uncovered. And it's disheartening for man if we follow other men, if we follow a religion that is set up by men, a structure that is set up by men, especially if that particular religion detours us from that relationship with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, what I read at the very beginning, anything that keeps us from that personal relationship with the Lord and learning one-on-one -on -one with the Lord is, in essence, stepping in front of that opportunity, that relationship, and detouring us from what we are called to do. So God, and remember, I've, I've said it before, in the very, very middle of the Bible, and this is what happened in my own personal life, the very middle of the Bible, Psalm 118.8, put your confidence in no man but to trust in God alone. Because when we put our confidence in man, God indeed will show us just how frail they really are and how weak. Well, guess what? That's what he's doing. He's taking an institution that has been set up for many years, lots of power, and showing the ugliness, the evil that has come to the surface. Let's step back and look at the Bible and take a look at Saul. The Israelites wanted a leader, and God was saying, no, you can have a relationship with me. Basically, he was wanted them one-on-one -on -one to come to him, just like others that were out there, but they wanted a leader. They wanted a physical human being. So God gave him a leader in Saul, and Saul fell to deception and evil and greed and lust and the weaknesses of man. Then David came along. Now, he was a strong leader. He was a good leader, but he was still vulnerable. He murdered. He created. He uh, committed adultery. He was vulnerable. He was not perfect. But we had one perfect human being, and that was Jesus, because he was part human and God also, the divine. He was perfect. He was the way, the truth, and the life. Then when he left, he left his Holy Spirit that each one of us can go to individually to learn. And in my own journey, that's what I had to do, is to set aside all my preconceived notions, all the things that I had learned as far as religion, and say, I'm going to the boss. I'm going to God. God, give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, guess what? He did. But it meant stepping out of my comfort zone, of those things that I knew, those things that I had learned, my family members. And it was, it was difficult because I was comfortable dealing with the individuals around me and what we had believed. But God brought me to a place of brokenness in my own personal journey 
that press me beyond my religion and press me in to really seeking him and only him. And guess what? Boy, did he reveal himself to me and is continuing to do so. So praise be to God. Each one of us have that opportunity through the power of his Holy Spirit. Remember, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to raise from the dead, that raised Jesus from the dead, Spirit of God, that he came to a virgin, a virgin birth, the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have access to call upon him to teach us personally so that we can witness to others everything that we need to spread that good news, knowing indeed that each and one of every one of us are loved by him. So in this particular article, and what you will see if you go to the documentary about the Vatican, that indeed man is vulnerable. And if there's weaknesses, if there's a foothold, let's say there's an individual that is not completely honest about going into um, complete service to the Lord, then they're going to be open. And what has happened, that foothold has become a stronghold, and it's become over an entire religion that affects many, many lives. And they have put themselves in front of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because remember, the best lie is one degree from the truth. Many cults, many religions have taken Bible verses and built their whole system of belief, of religion, around deception, interpretation of words. If anything comes between you and your relationship between Jesus Christ, then it is not of God, and that includes religion. Praise be to God that we do, at any point, have an opportunity to come to the Holy Spirit, come to God through Jesus Christ. And remember, it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Something that we can't quite put our heads around, but we trust, and that's faith. And that's what the Holy Spirit gives us, that measure of faith. Because when we leave this realm, this temporary realm that we are in, called Earth, called life, we're going to be face-to-face -face with Christ. Do we know him? Or do we know religion? Do we know about him? Or do we truly, indeed, know him? So praise be to God, we can do that. And I want to pray right now specifically for people involved in this particular denomination and others that are out there that are being leading people away from that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Dear Holy Father God, we come before you now, Lord, and thank you that indeed we do have encouragement and we do indeed have teachers and those that guide us, lead us, and godly wisdom from others. But Father, thank you for being with us personally. Thank you for revealing to us, Lord, that we can have that personal relationship with you and that anything else that comes between our relationship with you, we need to check, to discern. And you give us insight. You give us the answers. For Father, you say to ask and we shall receive. To knock and we shall find. And that the door will be open to us. To seek and we shall find. So in every area of our lives, we trust in you. Father, we pray for all these religions that are out there that keep us from knowing you personally. That as things are being uncovered and the truth is coming to the surface and the ugliness that is being exposed, that we as prayer warriors intercede in behalf of these people, that they indeed press in to you, that these religions that are to represent you, that are falling and crumbling, that they do not lose faith in you, 
that they lose faith in the religions and the structures and the men that are missing the mark, that are sinning, but move closer to you. So praise be to God that we're being shaken. Praise be to God that the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, which is you, Jesus Christ, is coming to the surface. In our religious institutions, in our world today, all the way down to our own personal lives. The facades are coming down. The truth is coming out. It's being uncovered, and we are getting honest. We are being set apart and being made holy, which is only by that intimacy with you, Father. We are coming out of denial. We are coming out of deception. Praise be to God. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. All right. The next article, Christian uh, current event or topic, this is out of CBN News, Wednesday, February 26th article, article by Chris Mitchell, uh, Middle East Bureau Chief. The article is Divis Indivisible Film Tackles Crusade to Destroy Israel. And I picked this particular article because this goes in line with what we're doing each day, too, under the biblically prophetic uh, Israel and what's going on is the epicenter of what's going on with the rest of the world. And indeed, it's coming out, whether the secular world wants to bring it out or not, it is coming out what's going on, and that indeed God has all the pieces of the public, and it's coming together. And we as Christians are in support of Israel. We as Christians, whether our country here in the United States is on board or not, we as Christians are, and we trust in God. The article says, uh, does the modern state of Israel have a right to the land on which it exists? Do the Palestinians? A new documentary tackles those questions and the longest-running conflict in the Middle East. Israel, indivisible, a case for the ancient homeland, highlights Israel's latest challenge. Today, the world media has joined the Islamic campaign to extinguish Jewish history as part of their effort to delegitimize and destroy the Jewish state. Producer Lori uh, Cardoza Moore told CBN News, the film lays out a compelling and comprehensive case for Israel's right to the land. The evidence for Israel is overwhelming, Cardoza continued. From archaeological science to historical record to biblical scriptures to political resolutions and laws, there should be no dispute to the rights of the Jewish people to the land the Roman Empire called Palestine. The producers chose to premiere the film in a symbolic site. Ariel, the center of Israel's biblical heartland, at the premiere, the film's producers shared what motivated them. The goal is to educate Christians to bring this message because this message is being distorted. And there are lies that are being propagated about Israel and the whole Middle East conflict, Moore explained. I feel what we are doing at PGJTN is just coming alongside God's biblical narrative and telling a story that nobody seems to want to tell and then using the film program to mobilize Christians to action, to stand with our Jewish brethren. Many Jews believe disinformation is one of ma the main weapons used against the Jewish state. The first step in, God forbid, the physical destruction of the state of Israel is intellectual destruction undermining the whole reason for being of the Jewish state of legitimacy, Rabbi Ken Shapiro said. The film unmasks some common misconceptions in this dis disinformation campaign such as the term West Bank. Why is it called the West Bank, filmmaker Stan Morris asked. It's called the West Bank because when Jordan, basically in 1948, when they took over, took it over, they called it the West Bank of their country, the West Bank of the Jordan River. They named it the West Bank. You know for centuries, forever, it's this area, been, this area has been called Judea or and Samaria. 
Many see the film as a tool to give Israel supporters the fact, facts they need in this battle. And if they don't have the facts at hand, they become apologetic. The minute they become apologetic, they lose the argument. Dr. Shmuel Kotz explained, they need to be knowledgeable. Once they are knowledgeable, they can stand for what is right. Rabbi Shapiro sees the information as the first line of defense, not only for Israel, but also for the West. It's not only threatening Israel, it's threatening the whole foundation of Western civilization, he warned. So movies like this that present information and facts are the most basic and powerful tool we have, not just in the case for Israel, but for the case, but for the case for truth. So praise be to God that we are, again, have, have another form of communication and opportunity. Now, I want to kind of reiterate something here, uh, or point it out, rather not reiterate, but point it out. It says <laughs> that um, this opportunity here, this film, is the most powerful tool that they have. No, the most powerful tool that we have is coming together in prayer. And again, that's dealing in the spiritual realm. The communication tools such as films, such as movies, such as news that's coming out be it on the internet or television is simply a tool. And But we go to the source of all tools, and that is God. And as we pray through the power of the Holy Spirit, people are given insight. And let me give you an example. Several years ago on Good News Broadcasting, I put out a video that there was a movement of the Holy Spirit that people in that were Islamic, that were Muslim, in areas of the world in the Middle East where there was no pastors, no priests, no Bibles, no form of Christianity, were all of a sudden getting these dreams about Jesus Christ and being filled with God's love and converting. So in the midst of no communication as far as Christianity, God was there. I suspect that a lot of that had to do with prayer. I, have, I also suspect that it's part of God's plan in showing us that indeed there is a spiritual realm, that things are going on. We don't see the invisible but we trust the invisible one, God. So all we deal with is our limited understanding of this world. When we follow the Holy Spirit, we're not going to understand everything. And that's what God said. We're not to question God's timing and his authority. We're just to do it, to trust him. But to do that, that means relationship. That means you got to know him personally. So we spend each day getting to know him more and more. And as we do, we start becoming aware of what's happening in our own world. And that gives us the faith for the bigger things. So even though I suspect that these opportunities, again, are coming and using communication, I rejoice and I thank God. But the true revelation is coming in the spiritual realm through the power of prayer. So, dear Holy Father, we thank you, Almighty God, that indeed more and more of your truth is coming out, that more and more of this unveiling and uncovering of lies and deception, that indeed, Father, it is a spiritual battle and you are in control. The battle belongs to you, and it was won on the cross, and we, as your children, as your believers, are overcomers, and we indeed, Father, are overcoming the world, the flesh, and the devil. Father, I thank you that more and more information is getting out there to combat what is happening on the other side, that the enemy is doing everything he can to keep us under deception and lies. But, Father, you are showing us the truth in every area. And that we, as your children and believers, pray for our brothers and sisters. We intercede in their behalf. 
We move, Father. We walk in your Holy Spirit, trusting in you. We don't have to know what's going to happen next. We trust in you. For, Father, we know, Lord, through that relationship with you, that you have it under control. So we do not have fear. We have perfect love. Father, we thank you that we are seeing you more and more each day in our personal lives, in our community, and what's happening in our nation and the things that are being uncovered and what's happening in our world. And that indeed, Father, we are being pressed to trusting in you very simply, very personally, and that we do all that you've called us to do. And Father, all of us are called to pray, to listen to you, to hear you, to learn. So praise be to God, in Jesus Christ's holy name. All right, we're going to move over into the biblically prophetic current events. And again, this is Jimmy DeYoung, and we're focusing in on Israel and the things that are going on over there, because again, this is from the Bible. And and I want to take share one more thing to, with you, that in, in this I always encourage, test everything, discern everything. That is the gift of discernment, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And the beautiful part about it is I don't have to convince you if you don't believe if you don't trust what I'm saying, then I encourage you. In fact, I challenge you. Take it to the Holy Spirit. Take it to God. And ask him to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Ask him for discernment. That's the part that you're supposed to be doing. All of us are called to do. I am prone to being overwhelmed by attacks. I can fall. I can slip. I'm human. I'm not perfect in this world. But I do communicate and receive and talk to the Holy Spirit each and every day. I pray without ceasing. In other words, I'm in dialogue with the Lord. But I'm still prone to areas of temptation, maybe deception, but what I do do is I keep taking it back to the Lord. Lord, show me the truth. It's getting confusing. And I encourage you, take it to him. Ask him to tell you the truth. That's what we're called to do. So in biblically prophetic news, we have for the February 25th, 2014, the rabbi of the Western Wall in Jerusalem refutes the PA president, that's Palestinian Authority, president and says Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish people. It says Rabbi of the Western Wall of, at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, Rabbi uh, Shmuel Rabbi, uh, Rabbanowitz, Rabbanowitz issued an unprecedented attack against the Palestinian Authority, President Mahmoud Abbas, following the statements by Abbas that Jerusalem will forever be Islamic, Arab, Arabic, Arabic and Christian. Abbas made this comment at the 43rd anniversary of an Australian activist who attempted to set fire to Al-Aqsa Mosque and in an attack that only destroyed a pulpit that was installed by the famous Islamic leader Saladin. The rabbi said that ancient coins, a wall built by Nehemiah, the prayers and hymns of people across the world, and the ancient Jewish prophets confirm the Jewishness of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount and its future. So from Jimmy DeYoung's perspective on the news, he goes on to say, a denial of the Jewishness of Jew Jerusalem and the Temple Mount by a Palestinian leader, which has been refuted by the rabbi of the Western Wall, is a precursor to the end time scenario that can be found in Bible prophecy. Palestinian Authority President uh, Mahmoud Abbas has rejected the Jewishness of the city of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount and has denied the presence of a Jewish temple in the holy city throughout history. Abbas 
is in the face of all of history, even Islamic history, that states the reality of a Jewish temple in Jerusalem for hundreds of years. The rabbi responsible for the care and worship of the Western Wall Plaza area, which includes the Temple Mount, has rebuked the PA leader and said the evil spirits cannot appropriate for themselves and their faith, i.e. the Muslims and the Islamic faith, this sacred piece of real estate. The Muslims claims at the Temple Mount of Al-Aqsa, as they refer to this site, will be the headquarters of their worldwide kingdom, a caliphate, what they call a caliphate. So see, this is in contradiction to what we believe that Jesus' kingdom set up here when he comes, and the Jewish, their, second, their Messiah. And see how it's all being centered around Jerusalem. That is the cup of trembling. That is the epicenter of what is going on with the rest of our world. It says, the rabbi quoted from Isaiah 2, 2 and 3, that the mountain of the Lord, the Temple Mount, shall be established as the location of the Messiah to rule and reign from in the last, two, from in the last days. Mekai 4, 2, a similar prophecy, states the word of the Lord will go forth from this Temple Mount to teach the world of peace. Zechariah 6, 12, and 13 confirms a Jewish temple in Jerusalem and that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will not only build that temple, but rule and reign from that temple forever. PA President Mahmoud Abbas is incorrect. Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. And that's why I wanted to share with you, too, that last Christian article about that film, Indivisible. They're kind of... You know, it's coming out again in here in our world, whether, and again, if you, whether you believe it or not, that doesn't make it not true. God has a plan. It's coming together. And we, as true believers, meaning that we press in with our trust in God through Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, nothing else, we stand in that. And his Holy Spirit reveals to us, opens our eyes, that we are getting bits and pieces of what's happening. He has given us biblical prophecy to give us heads up, hey, this is what's happening, not to worry that I'm in control. So this cup of trembling that is coming to pass, Jerusalem, God's chosen people, Israel, we are trusting in God, very simply. We are looking at things and supporting Israel, that this indeed, this territory belongs to them. But we as Christians know that Jesus, this is his temple and it will be rebuilt by him. So as you, I encourage you to study Bible prophecy, to look at revelations and all the associated Bible scriptures that bring the whole picture together, this will indeed give you peace also in knowing that God's got it under control and that what he's doing is giving us glimpses and pieces of the Bible prophecy that indeed have come into reality and is coming more so with each coming day. So Father, we want to come before you right now. Thank you, Lord, that it's in your time and your authority, and we trust in you. But, Lord, we thank you for giving us revelation, giving us bits and pieces, showing us that as things are being unveiled, uncovered, that your hand is in all of it, that indeed you are in control, and that we are not to fear, but to Walk in that perfect love, Father, which has no fear. The only fear that we have, Father, is that reverential fear of you, that trust in you, 